Hey everybody, it's been quite a few months since I've appeared on camera, but I felt the need to make a video today because lo and behold, my favorite author, Cormac McCarthy, the news has just come out that his novels that we've been, that I've been anticipating and many people have been, have been anticipating since 2015 when the news initially came out that he was writing a novel called The Passenger which was going to deal with mathematics, philosophy, physics, and the nature of language, and all that, and stuff in that sort of vein. Today, we finally got the news that The Passenger and, an, and another novel, that a companion piece called Stella Maria, I th um, is going to be coming out um, this year. The first novel, The Passenger, will be coming out on October 25th, and the second companion piece will be released a month later. This is probably the best news in the literary literary world that I've had to listen to for quite a long time, quite honestly. Um, McCarthy, along with a few other older generation writers like Pynchon, Don DeLillo, William Bowman, um, those are the very few writers who are in the older generation that I still think have a voice in literature that isn't really being expanded on by other younger writers or, or people in newer genres. And I just can't, I can't really express how excited I am for this because, like I said, since 2015, when the news initially came out that he was writing another novel that he had been working on for decades, apparently, that and that, that's no surprise for McCarthy. If you look into his history... He spent nearly two decades, or maybe even a little bit more than that, on Sutri, his novel about uh, Cornelius Sutri, and even Blood Meridian, which is his magnum opus for many people, probably my favorite of his as well. He spent decades working on that for doing research. So if there's anything that we know as Cormac McCarthy as a writer, he does his research and he takes his time. And one of the things that I found really, which really engaged me today about the news is how We've always had somewhat of an idea of what The Passenger was going to be about just by little snippets that McCarthy has sprinkled in throughout the years. Like he mentioned that it was going to be set in New Orleans or that it would take place in New Orleans at some point. That there was going to be a brother and sister and that there might be a suicide. But we, it has been confirmed that there is a brother and sister. Their names are Bobby and Alicia uh, Western and I've heard a lot of people on Twitter and some other places like complain about the names I'm like I don't really see an issue to complain about I mean this is Cormac McCarthy we're talking about like he if he's gonna name somebody something like that then there has to be a reason to it I mean let's be honest I mean like it's not it's not even like McCarthy is going like is stre is making a stretch in the names here because like read any Thomas Pynchon novel or even sometimes Flannery O'Connor or hell, Nathaniel West, and you're always going to come across characters with very strange names, like Shrike from Miss Lonely Hearts, or just uh, Slothrop with Gravity's Rainbow, and that's not even the, that's just the tip for Pynchon when it comes to weird names, but um, what, what, he, what has been explained in the articles that I've read is that the Passenger is going to be, which is the first novel in the series, takes place in 1980, and the brother, Bobby, is a salvage diver, and he goes into, and he has to find this sunken jet in the Mississippi, like off the coast of Mississippi. And apparently there are things missing that are supposed to be there. And it's also implied that there might be some government conspiracy going on because in the article, the New York Times article, it also describes that later on he gets approached by some people in suits. So there's going to be some there's going to be some uh, espionage or something very fishy going on with that plot. But what I find also really interesting is the companion piece called, um, I think it's Stella Maria or Stella, something like that. When I looked up what that means, I because I was curious because I'd never heard of that. It sounded like something religious. And Stella Maria, from what I remember looking up, it's kind of a play on the St. Mary thing, but for like the sea Something like that. I have to re. I have to go back and look into that. But it, but that sounds really interesting, considering 
the passenger takes place by what they mentioned in the article that he's a he's a salvage diver and it takes place on a coast a sunken plane or jet so that's going to probably connect in some way to the idea of the companion piece and what's interesting is that this companion piece from what i've read it's 200 pages and it's from what i've read it's all in dialogue and it's all between the sister who is a physics student at, at the university of chicago or at chicago in some place and she might and she's been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia so the second novel is her talking with her psychiatrist in a dialogue form so that sounds really intriguing so i w i can't wait to see how mccarthy's going to put together these narratives of this brother and sister with the brother being a salvage diver and the sister being a mathematician or physics student who has schizophrenia like that sounds it almost sounds kind of unreal like how is how is he going to add these two narratives together and as the articles and what's being revealed to us through what's being revealed today is that the novels are still going to tackle what what was mentioned in the 2015 when he initially re re released this information, which is it's, gonna, it's still going to tackle questions of philosophy, morality, mathematics, physics, and, and myth and religion. So I'm just like, oh, I can't wait to see how he's going to like can connect all of these narratives together with the with with these ideas. Oh my God, there's a reason Cormac McCarthy is is my favorite author of all time and why he's generally considered one of the best American authors. I mean, actually, hold on one second, because this is something that I was looking into recently because I've been, I've noticed that there's a lot of, that ever since I've been getting into certain like people or topics, like a few weeks or a few days after I get into something of my own volition or, of, or own curiosity, then lo and behold, something in the news comes up about that. And so I think it's a little, it's a little, it's it's a coincidence, but really cool that my last video was on Cormac McCarthy's The Road, and that, and yet, lo and behold, a month or or almost two months after I released that video, we finally get information on the two novels. But hold on one second. This one book of, uh, that I got from the library that I've been wanting to read is um, called Books Are Made Out of Books. And what it is, it's a guide to Cormac McCarthy's literary influences. It's this book. And when I was reading through it, like the author goes into, he, he mentions that if you wanna go find the notes that Cormac McCarthy has on his novels, whenever he writes a novel, or any sort of work of his that's a screenplay or anything, he'll always have notes and he'll usually like write references to who he needs to look up for research or to allude in his works. And a lot of that is is uh, collected in the Whitliff, uh, the Whitliff collection in Texas. And the author of this book went to those collections and, and had all of his notes and looked through them and found all the literary references that he alludes to. And lo and behold, throughout, and he has so many works in which he goes through every novel, or at least almost every novel. He doesn't really get into all the pretty horses or no country for old men, but throughout most of his works, he has lists of people that McCarthy and his notes references or through correspondence that he has for his illusions. And I mean, just look at this. That's a, sh that, that, the amount of research that Cormac McCarthy goes into to write his works, it's absolutely staggering. Like, so when, so, and I've been seeing a lot of people are getting a little nervous that maybe this might not be a good novel of his because throughout the articles, it'll mention that he, he initially turned in drafts of the passenger and even a completed version of the Stella companion novel back to Knopf like eight years ago. So I'm guessing people are being like, oh, why Why is it taking this long for him to, re to like get into announcing it? Now it's like, well, think about it like this. As I mentioned, McCarthy always takes years working on his works. Like I mentioned about Blood Meridian and Sutri, it took him decades to finish those works. 
I'm sure that when he gave it to his editors a few years back, eight years ago, he would come back and re-edit it because he's a he's a perfectionist. McCarthy is like Stanley Kubrick in the literary form in that he's a perfectionist when it comes to perfecting his prose and his illusions and how he wants to structure his work. So I, I wouldn't be worried. I don't know why people are getting worried about this, but yet again, this is the age of Twitter where most people are going to be very... It's not like they're genuinely skeptical. It just seems like they want to find any type of reason to just kind of second guess someone. But for me, I'm ele I'm elevated right now. I'm just, this is some of the best news I've heard in quite a while. So I just want to let you guys know that, yes, it's finally coming this year. In October and November, Cormac McCarthy is finally releasing his novel, The Passenger and Stella Maria. I might be mispronouncing the Stella one. It's Stella something, but I'm just, I had to release this as a video, but um, but with that being the case, I need, I guess, what, what's my next project going to be? I'm working on a few things at the moment, and I'm still, and I work outside of my YouTube videos, so I mentioned that, I actually, I mentioned a few months ago that I was going to make a video on Iago from, um, uh, Othello. I'm still going to do that, but um, I got to get back into, into I got to get back into research for that. And I'm also going to get into Macbeth. I might actually do a series review or analysis of Shakespeare's tragedies. Uh, that's something I've been wanting to do. I'm probably still going to get to that. I'm actually halfway through my Macbeth essay, so I might just do that for my next work. Or actually, as a matter of fact. This is also relevant. Um, I've been getting into the Jordan Peterson stuff a lot more recently as well. And I'm not sure if that's going to be, I'm not gonna, I'm not sure if I'm gonna get into writing about it or getting like starting that project in the next few months or so, because this is a big endeavor. And I still need to get back on my abortion series, but I have so much on my plate right now that I'll just keep you guys updated for what I'll be working on next. But in the meantime, this was just a big, uh, this was something that I felt needed to be addressed because this, to me, this is the biggest literary uh, event and notification of the year because Cormac McCarthy is, there's no one else like him. He is, he's, he is the heir to William Faulkner and even more. I think he even transcends Faulkner's writing in some aspects, so don't 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 take it the wrong way. But this was just a great news that I need to share with everybody. But um, I hope you guys enjoy this, and if you're interested in the, my videos of literature, religion, and philosophy, think about subscribing if you're into that kind of stuff. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later, and have a good evening.